Hello and welcome to the Idiot Book Nook Podcast. My name is Blazeman, my pronouns are she, her, and they, them. And I have uh, Hot Pockets. Hot Pockets! Ding! I am the Reading Dragon, and my pronouns are she, her, and I have been slowly consuming uh, jungle juice-infused uh, adult gummies. I'm Lady Punnett. I pronouns are primarily she. Sometimes they them. And today's a they them kind of day. And I'm on the high. You're on the what? I'm on the high of sleepiness. Good. Mm. And I'm pretty shy. <laughs> uh, I'm eating gummies. Hey, they're Sour Patch Kids. They're not. Oh, Sorry. I'm excited. They're, they're not alcoholic infused? No. I or something else. The weekend. So two of us have been drinking tonight. Or something else infused? Save that for the weekends. <laughs> I think Critter would have to be careful to not have those near her guest, your desk, in case the Critters came by. With that, we are going through episode 10 of Prospero School of Magic, The Return of Merlin. Uh, and we've actually already read the chapter, so if you haven't had a chance to check that out, you should probably go do that. That was last episode. This is the discussion portion, but if you'd like to reach us on social media, you can do so at lanktr.ee slash idiotbooknook. Go to find our personal socials, a link to our podcast, a link to our YouTube, so much more. If you'd like to come join us for our live streams, right now we are doing Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. It's going to suck switching back to 8 a.m. Like 9 a.m. Depends on what my morning looks like. Yeah. What my mornings look like when I get a job. Because I'm coming, uh, like, I'm, I'm in school right now, so. Yeah. With that. What are okay. we talking about tonight, guys? There was. So no much spice. <laughs> they who have the spice controls the universe. I don't know. Yeah, well, it's it's the kind of it's spice from the same barrel. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's. I don't know. Master seemed kind of happy. <laughs> Master didn't do aftercare yeah, that with was his sister, and that's just rude. That's a line I never thought I'd hear, hear uttered on this podcast. Oh, good. Especially from Lady Punnett. Jesus. Oh, there was no aftercare for Lady... the creepy sister. Oni-chan, what are you doing? Isn't, isn't Lady Punnett... Oh, please. Oh, please, the little sister was asking for it. Lady know, Punnett's supposed to be the group. Kind of, but, uh, yeah, but well, this different kind of bean right now. <laughs> Jumping Mexican bean. Sure, we'll go with that. Sure, yeah. <laughs> or, um, all that matters is whether or not you're flicking it. Nick says the lack of aftercare is the bad thing about this. Yes. <laughs> Just. <laughs> I mean, as long as they're not reproducing, then, you know, I guess as long as consenting adults, they're like primordial creatures. Like, back yeah. in the day, it's not like they had a shit ton of options. I don't know. I'm trying to make I would sense like, of this. I would like to say that since they're primordial beings, and it doesn't look like they can reproduce. Like, it was revealed that these guys are the creators of night legions and vampires. Which would have been cool to know earlier in the books to see why they are so dangerous, but once again, that could be possible foreshadowing for later editions. I mean, there were hints throughout the book. Vampires was never mentioned before this chapter. But the way they did their shit made hints. Nope, nope, nope. That was that was the the rock group, the rock stars. The rock stars were the ones that were eating people. We assume that this group was a different group and the rock stars. That's but it. it turns out they're all a part of the big rock band of primordial beings. 
Primordial. The Primordial rock stars. Primordial. They're they're like the BTS of this universe. They have armies. No, no, don't don't take that shot. Don't do it. It just takes one of them, and we're finished. That's all. Good night, folks. No. Oh, wait, I had more points to make. Oh God. What were those points, lady? On it. So it's kind of assumed the dad's in on this spice barrel as well. That just and makes it worse. Point out that there's only one female in this group. Oh no! Why? The guy they trapped was also male. So I'm wondering if maybe the reason for the woman's twisted personality was just years upon years of sexual. That just makes it worse. I don't know. I think I feel like those particular ones are all kind of uh, cut from the same cloth. Mm. Cut from the same stone. Yeah, just chiseled real hard. I bet they were chiseled real hard. (laughs) Anyway, come on! You didn't expect me to leave that hanging, did you? I'm glad Merlin's up. getting very snippity snip, and I think it has partially to do with the fact that his girlfriend is going to get married to the prince, and they keep having dick measuring contests. Uh, well, he got called out for um, some of the shit that he actually did pull when they all were in their original lives. Mm-hmm. I have a prediction. Uh, What's your prediction? Upcoming Merlin, Ooh. I could see that. I mean, Merlin going the way dark. his attitude has shifted since the beginning and the path he seems to be going down. Either he's gonna learn a really hard lesson, he's gonna end up our villain. Welcome, uh, and there has been some, I guess, some mild foreshadowing for that, like when some of his dirty laundry was aired for everyone. Yeah. It does look like there was a certain amount of veracity to it. So like there was the whole, like he exploded his village sort of, I guess, out of spite or revenge or something. I'm, they probably treated him like shit cause he was magic yeah. and you know, he had reasons, but it still happened. Right. Uh, yeah. That leaves a mark, blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, he has definitely, he's becoming very volatile for somebody who's supposed to like, be more mature um and then he's got like yeah mm. and, and then there's the whole like his girl is getting married to another dude and then nothing can stop that and i feel like trying to stop that may be what kicks your prediction into gear probably Maybe. i mean we've seen that merlin for a long time has been more Lee Gray. We don't know if he's on the anti-hero or anti-villain side of things, but you know who his biggest enabler is of this behavior? Morgana. Morgana. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, that's also not the case just with this book, but with the lore in general. Merlin is usually generally gray area. That's yeah. usually his realm. Like, and yeah. That's definitely something that's necessary, especially when you're dealing with somebody of his caliber. Well, Arthur... Especially- when you go through and read up on the lores where it describes Merlin as being the child of a great demon and a human. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, Arthur would be considered more of your paladin type because he's a stalwart true hero of the books. He's always got to be, he's got some hard lessons to learn, but he's going to turn out in the end. Whereas Merlin's lore get really murky depending on what you read. Yeah. I I have read I think it's on the list the Skystone Stairies where um, it basically puts Merlin in the times where like the Roman legions were leaving Britain uh-huh. and uh, it, it's beautifully woven together I will get to it eventually speaking of which uh, when we're done with tonight's episode go to our next. Uh, for after, after we're done with Charm's book okay 
a carnelian. Carnelian's going through sad things. Yeah. Yep. And she seems to be very conflicted, or I don't know, like, is it just a personality trait of these immortal beings in general, no matter which side of the fence they fall on, that they're kind of like hypersexual and that like their relationship ties are not based on monogamy and it's just something that they live and that's not mentioned and you just kind of have to fly with it or if it's something that's going to be maybe explained later because she's married but we're not and he seems to be kind of cool with her hitting on just about everybody and, and yeah it's just hmm I would imagine especially with primordial beings they have a real different way of um, navigating romantic and sexual relationships. Can we talk also for a moment about this bromance we got going on here? Yes. Yes. Let's get let's get to the juicy part of this, shall we? They're dating. They're what roommates, don't you know? Yes. <laughs> and they They're were roommates. roommates. They were roommates. They still are roommates. When Sebastian was first injured, who did he call? His fiance? No. His family members? No. His best friend Jenna? No. He called Chester. He first That's thought of Chester. I ship it. Yep. Yeah. I feel like it would probably be like, so far, it feels like. <laughs> Sebastian and Chester, and then Jenna and uh, what's her name again? Sally. Sally. They're probably like the healthiest relationships we've seen so far. Yeah, I'm not gonna they lie. are the healthiest relationships we've seen so far. Everything else has been either super toxic, one sided, Mary Sue, or, so or Lannister meets Targaryen. Not gonna lie. Like, I know it's hopeful wishing. Don't but I want to see more of that pairing. Just saying. Chester and Sebastian. Uh -huh. I need like a side novel, just adventures of those two alone. I would like to point out, though, that due to how we've seen the father reacts, apparently he expects all of his children to marry and reproduce. Yeah, the father can suck a dick. I'm, I'm, if I'm, we I'm... kill the father, does this all go away? Probably Maybe. not. I can dream, Harold! I think it's probably one of those things that's approached as as long as you carry the line, you can stipple whatever you want on the side. Yep. See, I would imagine that uh, between Sebastian and Chester, that is probably the reason why the parent dad is so gun ho about Morgana being married off. Uh, no, I think it's, so. Chester apparently was. Adopted by the family due to a very bad situation. Mm -hmm. So um, this has been arranged for them since, like, with Clara and Wesley. Apparently it's been arranged with them since they were both very young. Yeah, that's true, because they said they didn't want to tell them when they were younger because they were afraid it would, like, mess them up or something. <gasps> oh, yeah, you figure. <laughs> I think they were also... See, tell people that, when like... they're young. Tell them. Yeah, because what's no. going to happen is down the line they're going to find out like, oh hey, I I've met the love of my life. This is my high school sweetheart. We're going to get married after I graduate. About that, you're engaged to the future king of the realm. Whack the prize. Or better yet, mom, dad, meet my girlfriend. About that. Yeah, you need to marry the king. Mom, I'm gay. You still got to marry the king. Like, no! You just got to take that D just one time and then it's okay. It's all over. Well, that, not that. Like, but... what would have happened if Clara was gay? You sure, you sure you're straight, dragon? Yes. I like my vitamin D. Thank you. <laughs> the primordials need to eat people they have to eat people to live yes. also 
Just tell me there's a jail close enough to the school that apparently they can just pop on over and eat people. It's a buffet. Well, I don't know if it's like oh, shit, close oh, shit. to the school, but a- like AP says, so does Chester. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, wait, what does so does Chester? Does Chester like vitamin D too? Apparently. <laughs> yep. Does the Se- now next question, does Sebastian like the vitamin D too? <laughs> or is he more of a taco guy? I smell a sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> or does he like both tacos and hot dogs? Yeah, I think tacos and hot dogs are great. Hmm? But would you have them together? Yeah. I mean, if you had them at the same time, that's usually people's ideal threesome. Sebastian is straight. Hmm? But Chester Chester swings both ways. Oh. Interesting. Why does Sebastian have to be straight? You need to rewrite uh, to be. You need to rewrite that like appease your fans here just saying. <laughs> She's we, just a token straight. We need our pairing. Oh, you know. I mean, have, it could they could also be like Will and Grace. They could be like Will and Grace too. Platonic life partners? Platonic life partners. Wait, you said platonic. Are we talking platonic, or, or do, were you meaning to say platonic? It might yes. already be published. That doesn't mean you can't rewrite it. <laughs> Redcon. I mean, we already know that we have to spelling and grammar errors. What's to fix sexuality errors? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add that to my editing guide now. Need to fix sexuality errors as well as spelling and grammar. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Nix is right. Yeah, AO3 exists. There you go. Right? Do it yourself. Like Mm. dragon. No, I'm sorry. Wow! Yep, we just went there. Wow! That should be in your resume, Blazewing. I fix grammar, spelling, and sexuality errors. Done. It is not a sexuality error that I like men. <laughs> also, I would like to at least have one kid in a healthy marriage. Sure about that? I get myself fixed. Sure about that? I am sure about that. I know how that works I mean, out it's for you. I like how I like to assume all children under the age of 10 are asexual until proven otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, everybody's asexual until proven otherwise. True. Because sexual attraction is a weird concept for me, being demisexual. You know what? Yeah. I get that. I'm weird around that. So. Mm. It, uh, AP says it's also displayed that Arthur is bi. <laughs> Arthur and Chester? <gasps> Arthur and Merlin. Yes. Arthur likes sword jousting once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> Crossing See, Swords has a whole new meaning. Crossing Swords would be a great name for a medieval gay fantasy book. <laughs> ah, I see your Schwartz is as long as mine. Uh, so, so you'll see more of it in the- book three and four. Ooh. See, Ooh. when it comes to like the whole like sexual attraction thing for me, there's there has to be a vibe check met. Oh, absolutely. And a trust level met. Yep. Otherwise, eh. I like fictional characters. Nick says there this. is a term for that and a flag for that. There is, but I forgot what it is. I'd have Nick. to look it up. Nick says the swords may be short, but they know how to use them. We don't know how long the swords are. That's not revealed in the book yet. Unlike a certain D&D campaign. (laughs) 
So speaking of swords and lengths and stuff, um, even though the primordial beings, at least the women, seem to have a very high sex drive, we don't see them having babies. Yet. Like, we know that Citrine and her, has her children, who are the mermaids. And we know that apparently uh, Argon's children are uh, the elves. Yeah, but I mean, but, are they... Sorry, go ahead. I'm wondering if they, with those things, I wonder if they produce asexually, and then sometimes, like, when uh, they, they, the, the things that happen, certain <laughs> other things, like aquatic elves. Like tritons. Mm -hmm. If that's um, a union of the, 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 or did they produce their respective races like how uh, nebulas produce stars? So that's sort of what I was thinking. Is maybe not their children in the biological sense, and more in the like Geppetto making the puppet sense. Yeah. So now I'm just picturing Argon made all of the elves. He, like, carved them out of wood, and he made the dwarves out of clay. Yeah, there you go. Because he was bored, because his wife had to go visit his kids, her kids. And mermaids were made from bubbles. Seafoam. Seafoam, yeah. Bubble Seafoam is basically yeah. a bunch of bubbles close together. My bubbles. It's funny, because when you think about it, a good chunk of those, a good chunk of that seafoam is sperm. You had to go and ruin the sea foam. <laughs> You're welcome for that random fact. I mean, most of the world's water is just dinosaur spit. I would like to point out there are so many dead bodies in the ocean. Yep. yep. Fish pee in you all the time. Yep. Like, how, how much water does there have to be for a water to dead body ratio before people don't swim in it? I don't know. What's the um, ratio of salt in the ocean? Like, I know if there's a dead body in a pool, people don't want to swim in it. But but if it's, like, close to the beach, would people still want to swim in the ocean? Or would they be yeah. like, no thanks, I'll wait for new ocean water to come in? Oh, that depends. Did the body Is the body visible? I, I'd say, let's say the body is visible... From like at least thirty feet away, when you're standing on top of the lifeguard post thing, I, I, I'm gonna tell you. Just trust me on this. Decomp is not like the movies, and that entire area is contaminated, and you don't want to go near it. And if you want to know more on the subject, I can enlighten you guys later. I don't want to make people puke. Also, it's absolutely hilarious when people don't know that whales' carcasses explode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do they ever? Oh my god! I, wait, how can a whale carcass explode if all whales eventually die from suffocation? So, a whale carcass can wash up on the beach. If it washes up on the beach, the hot sun will create a bunch of gases in the corpse, and eventually those gases will build to a point where the body can no longer contain it. Yeah. Then it goes boom. Like yeah, especially since right. like the body's dead, it can't fart. Also, I like this is where I like that this is where our conversation went tonight. Just saying. Yep. Well, until Tom Brand is worse, and will be in the rest of the books, but it is what is being said by AP. Mm -hmm. Wait, what's uh, AP saying? The villain for book two will be worse, and will be in the rest of the books. Oh. Wait, is it more ghosts? More ghosts was. Depending on the lore, Morgos was either Morgana's half sister, or she was like one of the uh, druid sorcerers who was as like Morgana's right hand woman. Mm. I think I have, like I have a vague memory of what you're talking about. There's also more Mortrin, Morbrid, Mordred, Mordred. Mordred. Druid boy who was the downfall of Arthur. No of spoilers, Arthur. AP. Spoilers. No spoilers, AP. Lady Punnett's just very slow. Yeah. And in, no. depending on the lore, he is either the son of uh, Morgana. Arthur and Margana. Or uh, 
the sibling of one of the characters. Or, you know, just random orphan child. That works too. Uh, <laughs> like in the uh, BBC uh, series, Merlin, Mordred was random child. You said orphan, yes? Yeah. Mm. Nah. But yeah. Um, what do you think I said? I don't know. I think when it comes to this chapter, I mean, it was a bit on the shorter side, and obviously we couldn't read a big chunk of it because of um, nice things. <laughs> but Ooh. it's, I do like that we've established a little bit more of like, like there are plans being made. Like mm-hmm. they're not just, you know, like winging it anymore. There's mm-hmm. actual plans being done. And while Merlin is acting, overly chafed but i can understand you know dirty laundry is aired out trouble in a relationship school around you is blowing up like you know it's not a good day for him um <laughs> this is not he, how Florida to spend his taco tuesday yeah but he is still putting on his big boy pants and coming up with a plan so that's i good. still say with the way his attitude going that if he do- if something doesn't happen he's going to be going down a very dark path mm. agreed so, uh-huh. I feel Lady Pun is just like going back to the book. Just going to see if there's any more spice. Or going back to the previous spice. Well, I'm trying to see if there's any other points we need to bring up. Thank you. Because points are important to come across the point. Uh, you know what? There is a slight issue I have. That we've only really seen the primordials and Merlin do magic. Yeah. Yeah. Like none of the other characters. The most magic we saw from one of the other characters was Sebastian when he lit his cigarette. Which, by the way, don't smoke. Bad for your lungs. Don't drink, don't smoke. Watch don't it. drink, don't smoke, don't. So yeah, I think we've seen some of like I think we saw like when the 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 big medic guy did stuff. It was magic healing. The stuff. medic guy, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, <laughs> yeah. Doctor Dwayne the Rock Johnson gets a pass because we've seen him be yeah. a wonderful medical doctor. I need a story with Doctor Dwayne. I want to see a story with Doctor Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I want to see how Maddie he's Rock. able to. Maddie Rock. Maddie Rock. Silence, have a good night. I want to see how he's able to have like all those muscles and still have time to do his practice. The rock turn. Like is it like is it like with Terry in uh Terry Jeffords in Brooklyn nine nine where he's able to just do chin ups on muscle memory alone even when he's asleep? What the fuck? Yeah, in one of the episodes when uh, of Brooklyn Nine Nine, when Terry was so tired he kept falling asleep, he was still able to do his chin ups while he was asleep from muscle memory alone. AP, hey, I'll tell you what. Uh, sorry, uh, Zan says. Anyways, just wanted to get that joke up before bed. Good night. I smell what your prescription is cooking, or if you smell, or if you smell what your prescription is cooking. I don't get the reference. Raw tour. God damn it. Xylem came up with a really good one for uh, Dr. Dwayne the Rock Dasha. The Rock Doctor. AP, if the you Rockster. do, you have to put this doc in... Do you remember that old TV show called ER? Put this doc in an ER type situation. Ah! Uh, or, you know, a... a uh, um, oh, what's that one show? Grey's Anatomy? Was, no, not Grey's Anatomy. It was... Um, it was, the, it was in the same style of Days of Our Lives. So, Xylanth, that would have worked better if if you smell what your do- or what the doc is cooking. Also, are you talking General Hospital? Yes. Well, yeah, aside from that, I can't really think of anything. I think we're going to have to wait is, for the next chapter. AP says that is basically what the hospital is that is linked to the hospital. God fucking damn it! <laughs> Days of our rock. Days of our rock. Days of our rock. 
Yeah, I would want to read, like, even if it's just a short story of Dr. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Yeah. Dr. Mahoy. <laughs> and I want to see all the nurses and the other doctors lusting over Dr. Mahoy. Well, he's just trying to do his job. Yep. He's, he's more f- his love is his work. He might have a, he might have a wife or husband at home. He's like, yep, yeah, but that stays over there. I am working. This is what I work to do. Mm-hmm. The magic hospital for the magically gifted. Ooh, Dr. Boulder. No, he needs to be Dr. Boulder is what Nixus Rose said. <laughs> the Boulder <laughs> is conflicted about going up against a young blind girl. What are you, Sounds Jimmy? to me like you're scared, yeah. Boulder. The boulder is no longer conflicted. <laughs> <laughs> that is from Avatar. Oh, he has a wife and kids. Cool. Nice. Oh. Speaking Very of cool. Avatar, speaking of Avatar, they're finally coming out with shit for the newest one before Earth. Me. Yeah, they're doing their Earth cycle now. Again. Mm-hmm. I think we're gonna have to wrap it up. Yep, I'm just getting ready. Guys, we'd like to thank you for joining us for this uh, episode of the Idiot Book Nook. We hope you have enjoyed the discussion. Side tangents, comments. There's been a lot Very of shit fun. this episode. Thanks for putting up with us. As always, we love your faces. If you'd like to join us on, um, or find us on socials, you can do so at lanktr.e slash Idiot Book and for this episode of the Hit Book Nook, I'm Blazewing. I am the Reading Dragon. I'm Lady Punnett. And I'm Crittershy. And we'll see you episode.